students welcome to the class today we are going to dealing about hyperbolic orbits based upon our previous knowledge we know that uh, there are different types of shapes while we are dealing with uh, the orbital motion that's all depend upon the value of epsilon in order to use the orbit equation we must be able to express the orbit in terms of experimentally accessible parameters for example if the orbit is unbound we might know the energy and the initial trajectory we have already discussed about unbound if you are not familiar with this unbound state you may recall our previous classes in this example we shall show how to relate some experimental parameters to the trajectory for the case of a hyperbolic orbit we have already discussed about the orbital equations now we are going to discuss hyperbolic orbit by using the previous knowledge the result could apply to the motion of a comet about the sun or to the trajectory of a charged particle scattering of an atomic nucleus we know that if a comet is coming towards the sun the most probable case is like the picture that means the comet is coming from very far distance and coming past to the sun and it is deflected by a distance assume that the sun is placed at the origin let the speed of mu be v0 when mu is far from the origin and let the initial path pass the origin at a distance b here we have discussed sun and the comet as you know that mu is a reduced mass if the second mass that is here it is a comet is very less than the first mass we can neglect the second mass and mu is the mass of the first one here let the speed of mu be v0 when mu is very far from the origin and we can discuss from the figure is mu is passing by this way and while it is passes through the origin it is simply attracted towards the side and it is deflected to the far away if it is not attracted the comet will follow the original path if it is so the b is the distance that distance we can we can call as a impact parameter so b is the impact parameter the angular momentum l and energy r l is equal to mu v zero b and energy is equal to half mu v zero square for an inverse square force u of r is equal to minus c by r and the equation of the orbit as we have already discussed from the last class is r is equal to r0 divided by 1 minus epsilon cos theta we can substitute for r0 r0 is equal to l square by mu c can be substituted by the term l that is mu v0 square b square divided by c so which is equal to 2 e b square by c and epsilon eccentricity which is almost is equal to root of 1 plus 2 e l square by mu c so which is equal to root of 1 plus 2 e b by c all square when theta is equal to pi then r is equal to r minimum that means if it has a large distance the angle is theta if the comet is passing through the way if it is this point the angle is pi if angle is pi that is the minimum distance so when theta is equal to pi r is equal to r minimum so we have already discussed what is r minimum which is equal to r0 divided by 1 plus epsilon and substituting this value from the previous slide which is equal to 2 eb square by c divided by 1 plus the value of epsilon that is root of 1 plus 2 eb by c all square if e is equal to infinity r minimum will be b that means we know if the particle is not attracted by this one the particle it will move in this way so if it is not attracted or reflected the energy is infinite so r minimum will be b hence the value of r minimum in between 0 and b the angle of asymptoms theta a can be found from the orbit equation by letting r tends to infinity if we are placing r to infinity we can find theta a what is a theta a this from the further this angle is theta a similarly in the interaction mu is deflected through the angle phi 
which is equal to pi minus 2 theta a. So by using the two straight line, we can find phi is equal to pi minus 2 minus phi is equal to pi minus 2 theta a. That means this total angle is pi and this angle is 2 theta a. So the angle of deflection is phi is equal to pi minus 2 theta a. The deflection angle phi approaches to 180 that is will be in a straight line. If the value of 2 eb by c all square is very less than 1, the comet will not in a attracted position. It will not attracted. It will go on a straight line. So we have discussed what about the hyperbolic shape and now we are going to discuss some more about elliptical orbit. If it is in elliptical case, the condition may be e less than 0 and the value of eccentricity epsilon is in between 1 and 0. If it is so, the elliptical orbit will create and it is so important it is worth looking at their properties in more details because in all the major cases the shape of the orbit is elliptical it may be the, the shape of a orbit of a satellite or the planet which is orbiting around the sun so elliptical case is an important one from the orbit equation r is equal to r0 divided by 1 minus epsilon cos theta we can refer to the picture there is a r minimum and r maximum this is the case of a ellipse there is a one major axis and a one minor axis the minor axis have a r minimum and major axis have a r maximum the maximum value of r occurs at theta is equal to 0. If theta is equal to 0, cos 0 is the maximum value of r occurs at theta is equal to 0. If theta is equal to 0, that is cos 0 is equal to 1. So multiplied by epsilon that may be less than 1. So the maximum value is at theta is equal to 0. So r max is equal to r0 by 1 minus epsilon. That is the value of epsilon is in between 1 and 0. So the uh, numerator is less than 1 and due to which the r max will be the highest value. In case of a minimum value of r which is occurred theta is equal to pi. So in the same manner r minimum is equal to r0 divided by 1 plus epsilon. The length of the a is equal to r max plus r minimum. We can substitute the values of r max and r minimum which is equal to a is equal to r0 into 1 plus 1 plus epsilon plus 1 divided by 1 minus epsilon which is equal to r0 by 1 minus epsilon square. We know that r0 is equal to l square by mu c. And similarly, epsilon is equal to root of 1 plus 2 EL square by mu C square. By expressing R0 and epsilon in terms of EL mu C by equation B and C, A is equal to, we can substitute the values of R0 from equation B and epsilon from equation C. So A is equal to 2 R0 by 1 minus epsilon square, which is equal to 2 L square by mu c all divided by 1 minus 1 plus 2 e l square divided by mu c that is the values of a which is equal to c by minus e the length of the major axis is independent of the angular momentum orbits with the same major axis have same energy so the length of the a is only the length of the major axis is on, uh, is independent of L. So this is the uh, figure if it is an attractive or it is in repulsive. If it is, this is the dashed line represent the original line and the masses is situated at the origin. If it is attractive, it will go to the, this way and if it is in re repulsive, it will move very far distance from the origin. For instance, all the orbits in the sketch corresponds to the same value of E. So here we have a different shapes and which all corresponds to the same value of E but the shape is different. The ratio of R max by R minimum is R max divided by R minimum which is equal to R0 divided by 1 minus epsilon whole divided by R0 divided by 1 plus epsilon which is equal to 1 plus epsilon divided by 1 minus epsilon. If the epsilon is near 0, if epsilon is near 0, R max by R minimum is less than 1 
and the ellipse is nearly circular that means if epsilon is equal to zero the shape of the orbit is circular that is in case of this with the same energy if the epsilon is near one the ellipse is very elongated if it is in point six it is just elongated if it is going to one it is very elongated so in this way the value of epsilon depend upon the shape of the orbit from 0 to 1 if it is 0 the shape will be circular if it is from 0 to 1 it is elongated and very elongated the shape of the ellipse is determined entirely by epsilon r0 only supplies the scale so the shape of the ellipse is determined by the way epsilon and how much it is that is only depend upon that will supply R0. The table gives eccentricities of the orbits of the planet and Halley comet. We can see in the table here we have discussed a different planet with a different eccentricity. In case of a Mercury and Pluto, the value of eccentricity is greater than the remaining planet. In the remaining planet, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune have eccentricity which is near to zero except Mercury and Pluto which have greater than zero value. So the table reveals why Plutonian theory of circles moving on circles was reasonably successful in dealing with early observation. In the earlier observation it was declared that all the planets have a circular orbit that means according to the eccentricity all the planet except mercury and pluto have the eccentricity value near to zero if it is near to zero that is in circular motion so in the earlier case it was believed that all the planets have a circular motion but in case of mercury and pluto that's have a not circular orbit because mercury is never far from the sun and is hard to observe and Pluto was not discovered until 1930s so that neither of these observation was in favor with the circular orbit. That is why all the planets have a circular orbit because of the eccentricity in the according to the zero number. That is why eccentricity is zero in the same time Mercury and Pluto are in the same time. Because Mercury is very near to the sun and it is very hard to observe. Similarly, Pluto is in the same time a planet is in the same time. Then, if you look at that, the observation is very clear. So that neither of these planets was an impediment to the Totally, Mars has the most eccentric orbit of the easily observable planet and its motion was a stumbling block to the Ptolemaic theory. Kepler discovered his loss of planetary motion by trying to fit his calculation to Brahe's accurate observation of Mars orbit. Thank you.